In this week's episode of Modern Loan Officer, we're covering part two of managing consumer debts and credit cards to put you into a better position to purchase or refinance in 2021. On last week's episode of Modern Loan Officer. We're doing it right. We're doing it right. Hey, thanks for tuning in, everyone. You are watching or listening to MLO. And today we are going to unpack, and I'm going to use unpack because it's holiday season. The United States economy is completely worked around credit and debt, not only from a consumer standpoint, right, break easy, but also businesses, right. the government itself. So. Yeah, lots of different layers to it. And the most important layer is like, we're going to be talking base about credit um, and debt specific. And we aren't uh, licensed credit improvement experts or financial advisors. We are licensed mortgage originators uh, or mortgage advisors. So yes, sir. we have to say that all of this comes from a, a perspective of experience, you know, working with thousands of home buyers, home sellers, and refinancing. Um, but also just our personal experience. We look at a lot of applications, right? Casey? Right. So I mean, we see a lot of credit reports. Snuggle years. by the fire, kids. Yeah. We're, it's time for uh, a life lesson. Life lesson. Let's yeah. come together. Get close. Get close. Crisscross applesauce. That's good. 47.4% of women actually want jewelry as their gift. 32.7% okay. of men truly just want a gift card. We're going to roll that right um, into the average spent every holiday season by by a home in the United States. And that figure actually runs at about $1,500 per household. So that's a pretty pretty bit substantial amount of money. And it's gonna be on a sliding scale, income-based, like there might be some huge savers, higher incomes, more disposable income, and then maybe some lower income houses. So that is an average. But note that the average house does, according to the articles that we're researching here, $1,500 on Christmas. So. That's average spent on Christmas per household? Average. $1,500. Yeah. And we're using holidays, and yeah. not just c Christmas, because not everybody uh, celebrates celebrates Christmas. But let's roll that into the average um, credit card debt per household. Yeah. And as of the 2020 stats, we're rounding up here at about $8,000 per household in credit card debt alone. This does not count your private loans, your auto loans, student loans. We're just talking about credit card debt, Casey. Yeah, some I think, fine line layers. Yeah, and like going into just kind of a, at least how I go through the steps of the the credit introduction when I'm doing mortgage strategy calls with people, um, and once again, you know, I don't even know a licensed credit advisor. I don't know if they exist, but I'm a mortgage advisor, a licensed mortgage advisor in the state of Oregon and Washington. But how I kind of experience and credit and explain it to people is, if you're trying to dive in, typically. If you have an established credit, you're subscribing to the I hate credit mindset, which I totally understand. I remember my father at one point, I don't remember a specific age, telling me like credit cards are horrible and this and that and that. And I'm sure it was out of frustration, but that implanted in my brain, you know, growing up and be, totally. be eventually becoming an adult, still working at it. Um, <laughs> I always like to say, hey, if you're going to start somewhere, if you have a banking relationship, meaning you have an established checking or savings account, that's a really good place to start and see if that particular banking institution has a starting credit right. card. Because yeah. you actually do have some sort of history with that bank. So they can see that, oh, you know, Casey gets his payroll checks deposited here, he pays his bills. So often they're gonna be a little more comfortable than say going to a major credit card company that doesn't know who you are. You're just a random social security number, mm. date of birth and name, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So start there. <clears throat> I think that's a really good place to go um, and work with someone that's easy and convenient and sees your your cash flow. That's a huge, that's a great point, Addy. And God, that's a nugget there. Um, it's yeah, a good dude, way to start. If you're tuning in. That That's a good piece to know. Do not, you know, if you want to start somewhere, maybe start with that local credit union that you, you know, bank with or your, mm -hmm. your local bank and, um, and start there. Cause that, that, that's actually makes a lot of sense. You, you know, do I, have a relationship. You do there. have a relationship there. And I've never even thought about it that way. I mean, you, you call up your 1-800 discover or whatever. They don't know you. They don't mm -hmm. have any, you, you got no backing and you're, a fresh young kid trying to get trying to get a card, you know. Yeah, uh, that, that's a great point, Eddie. Damn. I would say too, like 
because you know I've had my own journey with credit over the last decade or so, been at the bottom, been at the top, right? So when you're trying to adapt a new habit of spending and say you're intimidated by credit or you're trying to manage in your spending, one of the habits that I've seen highly effective just from observation and, and personal approach is when you're purchasing something with a credit card because you need you want those to be active but you want to stay under that threshold use it like a debit card so now with mobile banking it's so convenient say you go into a store and you buy you know your lunch or whatever but let's just use a sandwich you buy a sandwich yep hypothetical right yeah, yeah. you get that sandwich and maybe it's a great deal eight eight forty nine with a side and chips nice. like great in a drink fountain yeah, that's drink. a good deal <laughs> it's a good drink but the fountain is actually diluted a little bit of water that's how they say it back on it they do that at costco if you don't pick up the 49 cent drink anyways back on the course you charge that on your card it's going to show up on that mobile banking app you go ahead and pay that Get comfortable with using credit, but don't absorb that stress of debt. Like, oh, I can't use a credit card. And yeah. just baby steps. Get the toes in the water. And it, it's okay. You'll get used to it over time. And it'll go from checking it every time you swipe your card yeah. and paying it on your mobile <laughs> to maybe being an end of week activity. And then moving to payday activity. And then maybe a monthly activity. So I think this is a great baby opportunity. Baby steps. Yeah, and I think that's just a really, like, say you're trying to control your spending, too. Don't bring all your cards to the store. Um, if you're physically going, like only bring one or the one you're going to use and set a budget and stick to it. And I think this is a good transition into some strategies we've researched on tackling debt. So most people are coming into a case of like, I have all this debt. What do I do? So right. where people could start from our research, once again, yeah. not financial advisors. <laughs> it sucks. We have to layer it so much with that, but that's not CPAs, not financial advisors, not right. credit repair specialists. <laughs> we are mortgage advisors and mortgage originators. And what we're giving you is passed down knowledge and knowledge that we have researched. Exactly. And to keep it very hypothetical, if you have all your debt, it's effective to organize that debt on a sheet of paper, write it all oh, out nice. in order of interest being higher so the higher oh, interest wow, wow. should be the one that you should focus on first or let me rephrase that it would be most effective in interest savings to pay off the higher interest ones first so yes. if you owe ten thousand dollars you're paying twenty percent on it versus five thousand at ten percent let's focus on the higher interest ones first so makes, you take your sense. combined amount of debt and divide it by say how many months you want to pay it off say it's one year okay. you're gonna divide that by 12 that's what you gotta tackle every single month and you'll get there so stay organized stay budget right Casey? you're taking that balance dividing by 12 and breaking it down that way and it might be a two-year plan it might be a three-year plan it's going to be specific for everyone and their particular income level totally totally nice, right? and i mean i think i think that play that you said of you know your online mobile banking that you mentioned earlier you know that's a that is a good way to tackle debt that is another way for you to kind of manage it i mean mm -hmm. gosh back in the day before they had mobile apps and mobile banking and stuff <laughs> we were sending in you know writing checks and sending it in you know trying to hit that on the sweet spot with you know three to five day you know in the mail you know make sure it gets there so no late no late payments oh, yeah, crazy. for me personally um addy's making a good point i mean you literally you can go right onto that mobile banking app it has transfers it's got bill pays it's got ways that i mean you can literally mm -hmm. i mean for me personally guys i mean i set it i i set it as calendar reminders on my calendar that pop up, you know, for me to make sure I'm making those payments on credit cards, um, for one. So I don't forget, you know, and, and this is what I do for a living, but Hey, you know, payments can get missed sometimes. The second is it allows me also to sometimes then take a look at it and just pay more, right. When I'm making that on that online. So it's like, Hey, Casey, reminder, make sure you're getting your credit card payment in this month. Perfect. Go on there. Well, I only got, you know, a hundred dollars or whatever. I'm going to pay 75 this time instead mm -hmm. of my minimum 35 payment or whatever mm -hmm. it is. But you make a good point. That mobile app and online banking is a great way to stay ahead and on track on where your spending is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm get, getting used to it. Yeah. I would say another thing um, that has been an effective approach, if you have extremely high balances or you're carrying something you want to tackle it communicate with the credit servicer so give them a call because there are approaches i've seen that have been effective like say you reach out to credit card one 
um, I'm making these up. I don't want to right. sponsor anybody, good or bad. But <laughs> say you reach out to the the person you have a credit card, and you're like, "Hey, do are there any balance transfer opportunities?" Now, this is a yeah, little more point, of an point. advanced strategy. So there are ways that you can take, say, the debt that you owe and you're paying interest on, and move it over to a new card with that company. Um, at 0% interest for a certain period of time. It's not forever. It's usually like 6, 12, or 18 months is what it normally what I've seen. And there are some small transfer fees. It might be like 1% of the balance gets rolled in. But work with those credit companies to explore your options. And my last kind of advice on that piece, if you're going to go that approach don't make a decision on the phone because most people on the phone in that first call, just like we talk about other mortgage people trying to say, close you yeah. first call, like just absorb the information, take a lot of notes, talk to your spouse. Or if you don't have a partner, think about it. I would say mentally marinate on it for a day. Don't make mentally any marinate. Yeah. Just let it soak in and review those notes and come back to it the next morning and make a decision whether you're going to do that or not. But try not to be closed by people on the phone because most of those people and representatives are being paid for getting you to open an account. Yeah, let's do so just research and gather that balance transfer opportunity. If you do have higher debts or need to explore that for any reason, um, that is an, uh, an effective approach that I've seen in the past. Addie's right now literally like teeing me up for my own. Like I've been sitting here with, I got a couple credit cards, you know, and they're small balances, but just the interest rates are just garbage on some of these yeah, things, yeah. you know? And I'm like, dude, what do I do? And I've been, I've been thinking about the rollover. Like now it's like, Am I going for miles? You know, where, yeah. you know, so like what you're saying is really right because I'm I'm easy. Like if I called, you know, whoever, you know, one eight hundred go Alaska or whatever the heck it is, you know, and I'm like, all right, you know, transfer over this balance, you know, hey, can I get some miles out of that? Right, no, right. all right, that's cool. <laughs> you know, like I'm in. I, I'm easy, so that gives me a lot of uh, good stuff to think about it because guys, you don't want to just make a decision right out of the gate when you're talking to somebody. Take your time. Yeah. Look over the data. Make sure you're getting yourself in the right card or with the right thing or whatever you want because I think that that's smart because, yeah, I was thinking about just rolling something and off to the races I'd go, and uh sounds like I need to do a little bit more research. Well, and I'd say, too, Casey, like another thing a lot of people get fooled about, and even it catches my attention with spam mail, like physical spam mail, is that bonus. You know, like open up a new card, get a $200 bonus. Here's Here's the skinny on all this, guys. Most of the time ignore the bonus, look at the annual fee. You wanna focus on zero annual fee on credit cards. And why is that? Because you want to extend history of credit. You don't wanna be opening and closing accounts. If you get a card, you wanna keep it for many, many, many years. Look at it as like a 10 to 20 year partnership. So if it has a $200 annual fee, you're gonna be paying that for decades. And it, it's likely not worth that one time hundred dollar bonus, two hundred dollar bonus, points bonus, because you're gonna be paying it for the rest of your life. And if you don't, totally. it's gonna affect your credit score because credit often I like to use this analogy, I've noticed that credit works a lot like an attendance record. So <laughs> every time you make your payment on time, you get a gold star, right? Yeah, you do. And say you've got credit card number one, like, oh, I had this for three years, on time, never the same, and they're carrying a small balance and they pay it off and close it out because it's just collecting dust, right? That whole history is now wiped. You just threw out your perfect attendance record. So mm. we see a lot in the mortgage world where people are like, I'm just going to pay off my car. My goal is to be debt free. And I always say, don't do any dramatic payoffs because we can always pay that off at the end when you're closing on a home. Right. Yes. Sir. And it's not going to affect that credit score because I've seen people pay off their auto loans and their score dramatically goes down for a short amount of time because that was their gold star attendance record. So advice then, um, one, obviously, you know, at Addie's point there too, if you're paying off a card and closing a card out, guys, you're closing out all that history. You're closing out all the history you've built. Gone like a whiteboard. Gone with the wind. Mm -hmm. And so uh, flip side, let's just say I am the guy. Like I got I got my two little cards. You know, I'm going to roll over and get a new card, Addie. Mm -hmm. Advise me then, or what would you say would be a good way for me to approach this? Is that something then do I just want to? keep those cards with me open, small balance or no balance credit card and just leave it at zero and just kind of. Well, according to the FICO models, as well as the credit wise research that we did prior to the yeah. show, they're saying that 
you should have a minimum of three credit cards. Oh, a minimum yeah, yeah. of three. For some reason, all the research is saying yeah. that, and I, once again, compliance. It's so hard to put me yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, Don't no, say that I did that. I told right. you to. But this is the research from CreditWise and the FICO apps specifically. Three minimum trade lines establishes a well-rounded credit portfolio, if Got you it. will. Now, if you're looking to get a new one, I always think like from what I've seen and read on the um, the simulators is you don't want to have more than one inquiry a year or a new account. Um, I think a lot of people are closing and opening more than they need to, and it starts getting pretty sophisticated, but focus on getting those first three and then working on the no, no annual fee and then increasing those limits. Make sure you're communicating with the credit card company every like six months on increasing your limit because if you do that, say you get your limits up over time from like 500 to 1,000 to 5,000 to 10,000 to 20,000, then you can start using credit as a tool, yeah. right? Yeah. Because you're, you're gonna be able to charge temporarily a lot more and say you need to buy a couch that might be like 500 to 1,000 to 2,000, whatever the couch might be, amount of people. Yep. sectional yeah. you know chase lounge high performance fabric you never know what stain <laughs> oh, yeah, prevention oh, yeah. you gotta have that pet prevention kid anyways pre kid prevention <laughs> right if you have a ten thousand dollar limit on a car or on a card and you're paying those balances down and you're not carrying any debt on it you're able to charge up to two thousand dollars and still be at 20 percent utilization so you're not going to see the needle move on a credit score for someone who has that high of a allotted credit right. line however say your limit's only four thousand You've now executed 50% utilization trying to buy this card, or sorry, the this couch, couch yeah, yeah. and your credit's going to go down. Yeah. There's no difference. Whether it was on there for two months, whatever, same purchase, just the credit allowed. That ratio is determining a lot of the scores. So you really want to focus on just slowly over time, and this takes years and years and years, but getting those limits higher and higher and higher because it, your percentage is just going to stay super, super low. God, you're dropping some good nuggets today. I mean, if I didn't know, I'd think this guy was the credit man, you know? Yeah. I mean, this is this is real talk he's giving you guys, some real skinny information here. And you know what's kind of interesting to me, I guess, and this is from just a client perspective when I see stuff, you know, I, you do see it where a client has multiple credit cards. I mean, we're talking sometimes, you know, it could be eight, nine. I mean, you guys, you got a lot of credit cards. And mm -hmm. then you always hear, you know, if you were to kind of probe the question or ask, you know, hey, is there something we can clean up here? You want me to kind of take a look at mm -hmm. maybe some debt consolidation or something like that? And a lot of them are, no, no, no. They like it because of whatever little kickback bonus it's giving you, you know. It's right. like, oh, no, we got that card because it gave us, uh, you know, $250 credit the first month we bought, you know, at Macy's or whatever it is. And, guys, I think Addy makes some key points. Don't get lost on these uh, these promotional things up front on it, guys. I mean, really, I mean, eight or nine credit cards, guys. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that can just get out of hand. And, and if, God forbid, an unknown year of 2020 <laughs> happens with corona, right? Uh, I mean, did we plan for that to be able to cover all our cards? I don't know, you know, so that's that's where it can get snowballed, you know. Yeah, that's a good point. And like those like cashier side promotions, like they're never like they're I, I haven't seen a situation where the long run it's worth it. So even we all get that you go to your, you know, Macy's Best Buy or whatever. And it's like you could save 20 percent on this purchase or TJ Maxx or like whatever it is, Marshall's. And it's not worth it because that short term savings, it's like say you spent a hundred dollars. Oh, I just saved 20 bucks for opening this new credit card with TJ Maxx, yeah. 20 bucks, right? But it's moved now your credit score from say a 720 to a 695 because you opened that. Yep. The change in your interest rate on your most important investment, your house, your mortgage, or if you're planning, that could shift interest rates in some situations depending on loan program, your other lender you're working with, compliance, all this stuff. 
you, you could be taking a 0.125 upwards to 0.5 percentage hit on quarter million, half a million dollar loan amounts. He's, he's talking real talk, guys. So it's big deals. Like just because you wanted to save twenty, forty dollars on your your purchase of the curbside or the register side, it doesn't make a huge difference. It kills you on the mortgage side. We're talking fifty, hundred, two hundred dollars a month in your mortgage, not yes, to mention sir. tens of thousands of dollars in interest. So look at it from the big picture. It's even awkward. Like I've worked really hard to get my credit from very bottom of the barrel no one would talk to me all the way up to primo status i've worked really hard at it still it is you went went from deep subprime up to super prime super prime (laughs) being polished but it is still awkward for me when someone at the register asks me if i want to open the card and i say no every time and i almost feel guilty and it's like this weird mental thing yeah why do you feel guilty though well if you had common sense you would act on this now but you know just use your line back i'm good thanks so much they have to ask. They're getting paid to ask. It's their job. They don't really care. Now you get that shovel. Oh, it's a really good deal. You should totally do it. They're pushing it because they're like, four manager is going to give them a Starbucks card oh, yeah. if they close. Totally. Them. But just, of the week. just say no with a smile. Like, I got plenty of credit cards. Appreciate it. You know, it's it's never worth it. And and that's, yeah, That I, I wish they would just say what it is. Because I think that helps people in line. Like, hey, do you want another credit card? Because then this changes it, right? Right. They get all these like fancy, like the exclusive, you know, consumer club. Yeah, Would you like cool. to be a part of it? And then you find out, oh, it's really a credit card. But you just be aware, just say no, mm-hmm. pass forward. Because in wrapping this together, and I promise we're going to land the plane here, wrapping this together to a common approach of refinancing cases, a lot of people find themselves in debt or their entire plan was to rack up debt and then refinance yep. their mortgage and utilize the equity in the home to pay off that debt. But in most cases, they're not actually paying it off. They're rolling it into the loan, right? Mm -hmm. So you are actually Mm -hmm. now, say it was, let's say it was like $8,000, right? You take $8,000 and refinance, roll that in. So you have one easy payment now, the lower interest rate and auto mortgage people are going to try to talk consumers into doing it so that you will refinance. You're still paying interest on it. And not only you're still paying interest on it, you're paying a new 30 year in most cases. And I wrote this out. I did this math. Yeah. AK and credit card debt rolled into a refinance over 30 years you will pay $4,900 in additional interest on that, on that 8K. And that's using the scenario of 3.5% interest rate. Wow. Think about that. Over 50% of what you owed, you are going to now pay. So guys, really I think that's something that is never talked to never. about the eager beaver mortgage guy or gal trying to close you on the refund oh yeah and you hear it all the time I and mean, we get your car loan wrapped in there we get all these credit cards wrapped in there get all that stuff wrapped in just you got you but you save three hundred dollars a month right you know, you're saving three hundred dollars a month also too what they're not telling you is they're closing out all those accounts too all those accounts are getting closed yeah we're paying them off build out a plan and to tackle it. that loses your history yep. again too so now mm-hmm. it's like we're just adding more god that's this it's a good episode, guys. It's a good episode. Yeah, and I, I know it's a it's a really heavy, heavy and touchy subject, but on a positive note, you just got to build a plan. And it, I want to extend my bedside manner even further and say everyone's got a case by case situation, and you got to do what you got to do to take care of your family. But note that like at least there's a lot of tools such as the MLO team. I know obviously we've got Casey here today. We have Bree, we have Christian hit us up on that VIP line. If you want to have a mortgage strategy call, you want to figure out how to grow your credit, whether you're trying to buy a new home in three years or three months, it doesn't matter to us. Like we sit down and have those video or phone call conferences and help people build out a strategy, right? Case. Yeah. And, and we're just, we just want to help you guys make your best decision. You can, I mean, there's nothing more frustrating than having people make decisions when it's like you could have gave them a couple nuggets of info that would have set them up in a much better position, you know, long term. you know, you just, but you don't know what you don't know, you know? So if you guys really don't know, I mean, please give us a call. Please reach out. We're happy to try to give you as much information as we have. We're missing a couple peeps. You know, normally you got me and Addy, CK, and Bree, but we're keeping it COVID. We keep it six feet apart. We're going to kind of do these two-man shows. But, you know, guys, 
credit cards, consumer debt spending coming up into the holidays and stuff like that. It's a it's a big deal. I'm glad Addy was able to just really give you guys some good information on some of that stuff. You know, be wise, make a plan. Um, I do want to shout out, I know we have um, some just kind of s- different stuff out there, and I'm going to give a shout out to this article and this individual, actually, that I read about the other day. So you got this individual, Nick Molnar and Nick Molnar uh, is an Australian. He's actually the first uh, uh, 30 year old billionaire Australian, and it directly ties into what me and Addy you know, were kind of going over today. Uh, Nick is kind of your tech guy and app guy. So he saw this, you know, as he's a younger individual like us, saw how consumers were spending, saw especially, specifically how millennials were spending. And so how do we help them out? How do, how do like me and you not just keep getting credit right. cards and stuff like that? He came up with an app and this isn't any kind of promo guys. It was just something I thought was a good way to help people financing wise. It is called Afterpay. It is an Afterpay app and it just allows consumers to take their purchase. Let's just say it's a hundred dollars and they can break it into four payments that are interest free payments. So four $25 payments helps them maybe keep that off the credit cards, helps that hundred dollar payment or hundred dollar purchase stay a hundred dollar purchase um retailers are liking it because it's bringing more consumers in so they're all for it and you know now it's a public traded company and so forth and so so forth but people out there are trying to help people be better about spending as Mm -hmm. me and Addy are we're trying to give you guys you know knowledge and advice so you know for us we don't have a cool app or anything like that maybe not yet but uh we do have that phone number 503-847-9038 you guys can call us anytime for any kind of, you know, information. We're happy to try to help you. Yeah, hit us up on that line. And that afterpay thing, we have no affiliation with any of these companies that we've named. No one pays us a penny to, to talk or None. it's the raw deal. But to Casey's point, immerse yourself into making some changes financially, structurally for your household, totally. whether it's managing debt, looking to expand your home, all these great things. And if you aren't listening to us, we have our podcasts out there, Spotify, Apple, wherever you get them podcasts. And if you're just a listener, check us out. You know, we're on television. We're on Facebook. We're doing the live streams. You find us. We're there to be consumed how you prefer. So until next time, Casey, we will check you later. Boom, chicka, boom, boom. Thanks for joining us today. On the next episode of Modern Loan Officer, we're going to focus on the topic of affordability. What are the main factors that determine your housing budget and what goes into this overall affordability of your home? Tune in next week to find out.